Okay, Assalamualaikum and good day. So, my name is Muhammad Zihad and I will show you how the bending test experiment is made. Okay, so please refer to your manuals that have been provided in the e-learning. Right. So, if you refer to the bending test lab sheet uh, it is uh, noted as experiment 4 bending test so let's go uh, through this uh, manuals and then we show you how the process of the experiment made okay and also we show you of course the tools and equipment that is used First, the title is Beam Bending Test. It is a simple uh, test. Objective, to measure the load deflection of a simply supported beam. Okay, so uh, it is a beam that we will use to measure the uh, load versus deflections. Okay, so more load, more deflections. Okay, so but uh, if the material is different, how how it is compared right next is to calculate and compare the modulus of elasticity of the different beam materials so when we know about the uh, modulus of elasticity then we can uh, put this uh, value into our calculations such as uh, in future if you want to design uh, aircraft wings okay so you need to know the modulus of elasticity of the materials. You put in into the formulas, and then we have you will get some value that will um, support your argument uh, in your design. Okay, so that's why we do these experiments. So let's see about the apparatus. First is beam apparatus F SM one zero four MK three. So as in figure 2.1 if we scroll down this page you can see this is the pictures so let's see the reels so this is the SM104 MK3 so we have this box so each box have one fulcrum that is in our uh, experiment for today we also have the scales okay and also, if we zoom out, this SM104 is on its stand. Okay. So this is beam apparatus SM104. So we don't use any load cells. We only use uh, next apparatus. First is dial gauge. So this is what we call dial gauge. So this dial gauge has few parts. Firstly, is the meters over here with scale 0 0.1 mm. And this is if I push this to the top, it will move. So when we pull it, we pull it like this. We'll use this such as this one. Okay, this is what we call dial gauge. Next is load okay so this is the load we have five loads with five newton each okay five newton each for for each loads next is vernier caliper so this is the vernier caliper that we will be using and when you, if you guys come here you will use this type of vernier caliper so if you previously have used this it is easy just pull this pull this one and you can measure right the thickness of the beams better and then this is the hanger so if we look at this hanger, this is a three hanger. We'll only use one, okay, one, 
like this. So it will be hang to the beams. Alright, so if you look at this three hanger and focus on the on this one. So this is a sharp pointed uh, bolts. This one is flat pointed or blunt pointed bolt. So this one is sharp. So we will use the sharp pointed because uh, this sharp pointed will give uh, a pointed uh, load to the beam if after if we hang the uh, loads. So we don't want it to be distributed, we want it to be uh, concentrated loads. Okay, and then next is the beams. So we we'll look at this one. I'll put this ruler at the side. So we have three beams, three type of beams here. So you can see the different colors. So we have this shiny silver. This is in brown. And this is not shining silver. Okay, so this is brass. Right, this is aluminium, and this is steel or mild steel. Okay, so how we can know which is which? So we can know first is about the color, and then the weight between this material beams are difference and thirdly how we can know is by doing a experiment test okay such as this bending test so we know uh, which is which which is brass which is aluminium which is steel okay, so this is a long beam right so we have looked into our beams, steel, brass, and aluminium. Next is related ISO. If you search in the internet, ISO 7166 1985, and car start configuration for passenger equipment and cargo restraint, and the second one, so you will uh, get more information about this. So you can uh, have more knowledge about uh, related experiment. So in next video, we'll go to the schematic diagram. Okay, so now we continue with the schematic diagram. Okay, this is the SM104 MK3. This is the, these are the spectrum. So we put the beams on top of the spectrum. But we don't put it at the edge like this. Or it might drop. We we'll put it... Uh, with the round here and here we have a, a distance between fulcrum that is set and put our we will put our delegate on top of the beams hanging on the beams and we pull our concentrated load including the hangers okay the hanger will put it we will put on top of this beam and we put the load over here so there we will see the band and measured by the dial gauge. We'll move to the next page. We'll go, we we'll read the introduction. Beam is a structure and mechanical element which is important in the engineering field where it carries the load horizontally on the length of the structure. We can see uh, it's like a bridges and airplanes, wings airplanes. The beam deflection is capable of measuring the load applied, length, force, deflection angle, and the modulus of elasticity of the various beam materials. Beam has been widely used in the engineering design, such as airplanes, bridges, buildings, automobiles, and etc. In this experiment, we measure the deflection of three different beam specimens. There is there are steel, brass, and aluminium, which loaded at the center point of their length. So this will be a simple experiment. 
will put the loads at the center of the beam. From this experiment, the elasticity of fundulus with the stiffness of the beam material can be determined and compared with the theoretical calculations. So we'll go to the theory. A simply supported beam that is fixed, fixed, and as shown in figure 2.2 is applied with a load W at the center point of the beam which causing the deflection given by equation 1. So you can see uh, we have been given an equation that you can use to do the let report later where this is the beam deflections W is weight of load L is beam length uh, E is elastic modulus and I is area moment of initial okay WL power of 348 EI and for the rectangular cross section surface the area moment of initial I can be calculated using equation 2 I equals to BH power of 3 divided by 12 which is B is width of the beam H is height of the beam so this experiment actually is only applicable for rectangular cross section surface it doesn't it so this uh, manuals, this formulas is only for cross uh, rectangular cross section surface. If you have a circular cross section surface, uh, you can use this uh, formulas. So from equation one and two, the beam deflection and the modulus of elasticity of the beam can be determined. Okay, so that's the theory of the of this experiment. So you will use, we can use this. Uh, two formula to create your graph and then you can get your result and compare it with the theoretical uh, data okay next we'll go to the methodology first okay we have uh, 10 methodology 10 steps so we'll go to this methodology on next video Okay, now we look at the methodology. First, uh, measure and record the length of the sample beam using the long ruler and mark the center point of the beam. So we'll use this uh, long ruler. Okay, let's, let's do the demo with aluminium. So we can measure the length of the beam and mark the center. So the center of this beam is at this uh, marking okay so this center is, is important because we want to put the loads at this point clearly at the center next is measure the width B and height of the sample beam at the dif three different sections using the veneer caliper and record the average value so we will we can use this uh, caliper to measure This is the width, while this is the height. Okay. On three different locations one, two, three. Okay. Next. Select a position in the middle of the apparatus and place the sample beam on the load cell to the position as shown in figure 2.2. Lock the sharp end. Okay. If we look at our data, I've prepared for you the distance between fulcrum. Okay, let's say this is 400. So, be, so distance between fulcrum must be 400 mm. 500 and 600. So let's take uh, 600. So we need to move this fulcrum so that these two fulcrum will be between 600 so between these two red marking is 100 100 200 300 400 500 and 600 so it should be moved to here and we will lock the bottom position so that will not move 
Okay, and this is static. We'll check again 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. 600 is around here, so we move this to here. And again, we lock. Alright, so this is 600, so it's still moving. Okay, so these two is 600. So we look at the center. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three. So this is the center for this uh, arrangement. So we go to the next step. Set and record the span length between two load cells using the scale of the top rail and balance the beam using the dial gauge. Place the hanger load in the middle of the beam so that the burn is on the center line of the beam. Okay. So what does it mean? So we we'll, we will put this aluminium beam on top of the rail. So our our arrangements just now uh, have clashed to this part. So we need to move this so that it doesn't interfere to that. So I'll, I'll move it uh, across 200. Let's see. Okay. And move this to 200. We check this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3. This here should be the center of the Okay, we'll move this more to the end. Okay. So this is the marking just now we we have made. So next we will put the hanger to we'll take the sharp pointed bolt so that it will be concentrated loads. So we'll put the sharp pointed bolt at the center of the beam. Okay, so that should do it. Next, we'll put our dial gauge. Okay, place the hanger, place the dagger in the middle of the ring, but the ball touching. Okay, we'll put our dial gauge over here, and it should touch the, these bolts. So place this to zero. Okay, we have adjusted the dial so that the reading empty and bezel locks. Put the load of five and newton on the hanger and record the reading given by the reflection of the dial gauge. So we'll get this load to that place. That is easier for us to put the loads. Okay, so we have set our aluminium specimen beam on top of this two foil chrome with 600. Mm, spacing between two for a chrome. We also have set this to zero, the style gauge. Okay, and then we also have put this hanger on top of the center line, and it is ready for 
the first load we will continue the loads uh, in next video okay so now we continue to put we will put the load one by one first load 5 newton loads and you see the change of the deflect of the deflected beams okay so we have see the change of measurement for 5 newton okay. next i put the second load okay that is the measure for second load so this is the third load so total now is 15 newtons we also have to look that this the gauge uh, needle is still touched with the bolts of the hanger so now it is three uh, loads equals to 15 newtons put another one so you can see the changes on the dial gauge there so that is 20 newtons and we'll put uh, last one okay so that's for uh, 25 newtons and we'll check the needle of the dial gauge is still touching with the hanger so we'll look into next repeat the experiment of all type uh, reduce the, the load one by one and record the deflection whenever the load is reduced so on step 9 we need to reduce load one by one use this one you can see there's the measurement use another one so you can see the the gauge or the dial is moving at the same uh, measurements okay repeat the experiment for all types of given beams steel brass and aluminium with different of span lengths x y and z mm okay so we have done our experiment if you are here we will need you to repeat this uh, experiment for this another two material with three different uh, span length so now as i have given the data in the e-learning you can use the data that we uh, prepared for you and use that to do the uh, reports okay let's go for the results for each sample beam fill in the results in table 2.1 okay so you need to put your results of the deflection in this uh, tables for each of these three beams next b plot a graph of beam deflection versus load and calculate the stiffness k of each sample beam using equation 3 so we have given you the equations so you need to calculate the stiffness k okay do it yourself all right the exam the formula is given so you only need to key in the value into the formula c calculate the area moment of initial i and the average modulus of elasticity e of each sample beam okay so after you have calculated the area moment of initial i for each beam get the average modulus of elasticity e of each sample beam next calculate the area percentage of the measured modulus of elasticity e 
with the theoretical values given in table 2.2 so these are the columns that showing the theoretical value of steel brass and aluminium after you have uh, calculated your modulus of elasticity put it here fill in this column and then uh, calculate the error percentage between the measured and the theoretical values it's okay if it is high because uh, you can put your assumption later why it is high and why it is uh, average or it is or the value is low just mean it is almost correct okay next for assignments there is put it you need to write in your lab report okay together with your data first give an example on real beam application and describe the importance of measuring the reflection of the beam for the application you must add in introduction sections so please give um, more than one although it is only giving one an example but please put more than one uh, you should have uh, put in three example of real beam applications okay such as let's say uh, main blade helicopters okay also can be used as a sample of uh, real beam applications okay you need to look uh, and serve to the internet about that next is write the der derivation on how equation 2 and 3 can be determined so you need to add it add in theory sections thirdly discuss the results add in discussion sections four give the reason on the error between the major and theoretical values of the elastic modulus for each simple beam okay Five, give the methods on how to improve the error while doing the measurements. Please uh, uh, provide more than three, three methods on how to improve the error. So last, uh, Lee, add conclusion section and add the reference sections. So this is how the, the lab is made. Okay, so you need to uh, read through these manuals and follow through these videos to answer the post quiz uh, question that will be available uh, at 5 until 5.15. Okay, so that's all for this uh, experiment 4 bending test. Uh, I hope you guys uh, will learn something uh, with this bending test and last but not least this type of experiment is important so that uh, in future if you guys want to design uh, such as airplanes or UAVs you need to know about its materials or properties such as the modulus of elasticity of a different beam materials how load and deflections uh, can be described in reports so that you can justify your argument to use this material for this uh, airplanes or UAVs okay this, so that's all for now uh, please make your report ready uh, in one week you can pro you can submit uh, through my e-learning uh, as below after the post quiz you, you, you have, we have the links so you can post or I, I mean submit your PDF reports to that links that's all for now uh, I hope you guys are happy uh, and stay safe uh, hope and see you guys later in USM Thank you. Assalamualaikum and goodbye.